For our next neuroscience topic, I want to tell you guys about something called the triumph circuit. Now, the triumph circuit isn't quite like the dopamine circuit or some of the emotional circuits we talk about in the sense that those circuits are very um, easily mapped onto the brain. Like, there's a part of your brain called the nucleus accumbens that secretes dopamine and gives you a sense of pleasure. There's a part of your brain called the amygdala that anytime you feel fear or negative emotion is active. The triumph circuit is a little bit different. It's something that doesn't localize to one part of the brain, but is just a general pattern of kind of psychology and cognition that is important to human beings. In short, the triumph circuit is the part of our brain that makes us feel good when we overcome a challenge. And to start to understand the triumph circuit, we have to track back to why human beings have this in the first place. And if you stop and think about what makes a game so addictive, there's a sense of a challenge followed by an achievement. Like if you're playing a game like Dark Souls and you've died six times on a boss, and then you beat that boss afterward, you feel amazing. It gives you this rush. So where does that rush come from? Why do human beings relish something that is a challenge followed by a success. Where does that feeling of triumph come from? And what we need to do is actually track back and look at kind of evolutionary biology to understand where the triumph circuit comes from. So like millions of years ago, when human beings were hunter-gatherers, there would be like a range that they would sort of hunt and forage in, and you would sort of have a, 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 like a territory and people would go out and they'd kind of like look for berries or look for animals. And sometimes, you know, that area was kind of, it was safe, it was a little bit conservative. People knew where the predators were, they knew where like the berry bushes were. And so it was kind of like a safe place to be. And then what happened is some human beings had the desire to kind of go beyond that safe place and to venture a little bit into dangerous parts of the jungle. And for the ones who ventured into the dangerous parts, there's a greater chance that they would find food because it hasn't been picked clean because it's not the safe part. And so the ones that ventured out past the safe zone and exposed themselves to more predators had a greater chance of finding more food. And so when they ventured into the dangerous territory, everyone was kind of scared, right? They're like, oh my God, don't go into the forbidden area of the jungle because you may be eaten by a tiger. But when they came back with more food, they were rewarded because they went into the dangerous territory and succeeded in bringing something back. So if you look at evolutionary biology, there's a strong story about venturing into the unknown and finding something, overcoming some kind of challenge, and then bringing it back to society. And if you look at how that's shaped social psychology, we as human beings value people who overcome odds. Why is it that society cares that someone survived cancer? Like, why is that a thing? Like, why do we value that? It's because cancer survivors speak to that triumph circuit. There's something about the danger of cancer and the, the capability that cancer is absolutely going to destroy you, that when you survive it, it becomes something that is universally esteemed. If you get if you face any kind of challenge, like let's say that you know, you're, you're in a war zone and you have to like travel through a war zone and then you make it out alive, you're going to feel a great sense of exhilaration and you're going to feel a sense of triumph. So human beings have a very fundamental circuit in their brain that correlates the amount of challenge they face with the amount of triumph that they feel. And if you think about video games, Video games have done a very good job at striking that balance. Let's think a little bit about games that are too easy. Why aren't they fun? It's because they're too easy. And other games that aren't fun are games that are too hard, right? Like if you just think about it, like if there's a game and you turn on God mode and then you run through the game, it's not nearly as fun as if you play it normally. So there's something about games that they, game designers work really hard to strike this balance of making it challenging enough to feel like you accomplish something when you overcome that challenge. But in order to get that feeling of, of accomplishment, you have to have a feeling of a challenge. And what that's doing is accessing the triumph circuit of our brain. 
the really dangerous thing about the Triumph Circuit in video games is that the Triumph Circuit was originally designed to help human beings achieve something in life. So if you think about who do we respect, we respect people like doctors and lawyers because the path that they've walked tends to be viewed as harder. Like studying really hard for seven years to becoming a neurosurgeon is something that we respect because it's hard to do. We respect people who do hard things. And that's been kind of a good thing from an evolutionary perspective because when we face a challenge and we overcome it, that yields good rewards. I mean, that's correlated with actual Im improvement in your personal life. If we think about you know, jobs and, and adversity, society compensates doctors higher and neurosurgeons at a high rate because what they do is very difficult. So we fundamentally respect people who can overcome challenges. What happens in a video game is that they sort of artificially hijack that triumph circuit. And so they give gamers the feeling of achieving something or being triumphant by activating that circuitry in your brain. The problem is that that achievement doesn't actually come with a real world reward. And so what happens is that, that triumph circuit for norm, most people causes them to strive to achieve something and improve their lives. But when that, that same part of your brain, when the triumph circuit gets activated by the game, then suddenly you get the same neurological benefit, but without any of the real world consequences. And that's what makes it so incredibly dangerous. And so one of the things you have to understand as a gamer is when you achieve something in the game, the degree of achievement that you feel from a neurologic perspective can be really similar to what you feel when you achieve something in the real world. Because the game is just accessing that circuitry. And so you have to be careful because when you look at yourself and you look at you know, why do I play the game and what do I like about playing this game, how does the game make me feel, recognize that part of that is a feeling of triumph. And once you understand that that feeling of triumph is there, you'll start to be a little bit better at navigating some of the challenges that you face in the real world. But at the end of the day, I think the main point of, of explaining the triumph circuit is just to equip you guys with knowledge. Take a look at yourself and ask yourself, why do I play this game? When is it that I feel the best in the game? What's so exciting about downing a raid boss in World of Warcraft or FF14? Like, why does that feel so good to us? It's because it's hijacking this thing called the triumph circuit, and you feel like you've really accomplished something. Gamers feel like they've really done something worthwhile when they down this raid boss. But the really dangerous thing about that is that that raid boss was designed to be defeated. Games are designed to be beaten. And what game designers do is they want to make it hard and make it feel like an achievement. But if you really stop and look at it, all games are designed to be beaten by most people. Otherwise, they wouldn't sell. And so it's all this artificial hijacking of this circuitry, which can be really dangerous, because that's the same circuitry that causes us to actually work really hard in life. And if we're activating it without working hard, then it becomes really hard to activate it by working hard. Because why would your brain want to work hard and activate it when you can just get the shortcut and activate it through a game? And so understand that when you play the game, it's actually tampering with your brain in a way that is especially challenging to deal with. The reason that you can't stop gaming is not because you're lazy or not because you don't have willpower. It's because there are fundamental parts of your brain that drive behavior that are driving your gaming. Because the triumph circuit drives your behavior. And so you have this fundamental piece of yourself that is forcing you to game. And you have to understand that about yourself. You really have to understand that piece of yourself if you want to have any chance of getting control of your gaming.